Me and my wife travel at least two to three times in a year for vacation, and this year she wanted to visit Andamans. After a two and a half hours boring flight over Bay of Bengal, we landed in Port Blair, and the newly constructed terminal of the Veer Savarkar International Airport was quite impressive. Port Blair looked clean, colorful, and calm. And on this trip, we decided to stay in Swaraj, the aka Havelock Island. And the easiest way to reach there is by a ferry. The check-in process is like airports, and it was a very smooth experience. The ferry had air conditioning. comfortable seats and a food counter there's a premium section on the upper deck and i felt the only difference is like room after approximately 90 minutes you reach the island and the first thing that strikes you is not just the pristine blue waters but the number of families you spot here and the rush for collecting the bags anyway what i was looking forward to though was the water activities and the last time i saw such clean turquoise blue waters was in maldives the moment you step out of the ferry jetty terminal you'll find a lot of transport options and ours was a short 10 minute ride to the resort The biggest highlight of our resort was the Pravin Beach. Our resort is weirdly sandwiched by a road. So if you're planning to stay at this property, make sure you book the cottages that lie between the restaurant and the pool. You not only get quick access to these amenities but also the lovely beach. Next day we decide to check out some local restaurants and we found this nice little restaurant called something different and the views from here were truly something else. Post lunch, we decided to check out a scuba diving center called Laka Dives. And when I realized there is a slot available, I decided to get myself trained, which is a prerequisite for a dive the next day. After the training, we decided to check out Radhanaka Beach because this is adjacent to the Taj property, which houses the scuba diving center. And the sunsets here were peaceful and amazing. Stay tuned because we have some interesting drone videos coming up later in the video. One advantage of accessing Radhanagar Beach through Taj is that you would avoid the crowd, which is usually present from the main gate. My scuba session was scheduled for 8 a.m. and my wife Manogna was scheduled for a snorkeling session in the same boat. So along with few other participants, we headed out. And this is the first time I'm going. little away from the shore to do a scuba diving session this is my second ever so there are few nerves but i was calm and so did the sea i was super excited to see how this experience would be and the instructors in laka dives were very hands on clear direct and it was a lovely experience on a whole you need to make sure that the regulator is in your mouth um, and you are securing it with the palm of the right hand and the fingertips on the mask here your other hand is also going to secure the back of your head as well as the mast you know this position is important because when you do the giant strike okay water will splash over your face uh, you want to make sure that everything is nice as you can see kunal is all the way at the edge of the boat so his fins are out yeah next he is securing his mask regulator and he's also looking straight at the horizon not at the water and on the count of 3 he takes a giant stride inside okay so 1 2 3 So you see, it's a step, not a jump. And in some time, <laughs> you'll pop back up. Once you're up on the surface, please land your back with the bags. Right, the instructor will be there too. After the first batch went out, it was my turn, and I felt very relaxed for my second ever dive.
like the last experience in Maldives, I was told this is a lazy man's activity and I should let the instructor navigate me over and underwater. The first life I saw underneath was an octopus and it was kind of scary when the instructor took me so close to it but I heard they are very shy. We ventured deeper and the waters were so clear with the sun rays that I could see a lot of aquatic life. My instructor Govinda was very hands on and he checked on me regularly, sometimes a bit too much. Also the photographer was nearby and seeing this footage I can say he did a great job. This is probably the most aquatic life I ever saw and it was a very calming experience. On a whole, this was my best scuba diving experience ever. While I was downstairs, my wife did her first snorkeling session ever and it sure looked good from down here. How was it? Different experience. Nice. Post the scuba session, we went back to our hotel, refreshed, and headed to a nearby cafe for lunch. Interesting. What attracts me is this chill, cool vibe of a hut with the view of the beach, which I'll show you in a second. Seems to have outdoors heating too. Nice. Very rustic. Those watercolors, dude. I think today the watercolors are brilliant. Ooh, they even have a boat, like someone's building a park or something. Damn! Look at those colors. I don't know if the phone can do justice, but it's much more bluer in person than what the phone shows. So there's Gandhinagar Beach. Just gonna sit here, have some food. Kuba section was a bit tiring, slightly, but it's just we got up early. I'm just gonna have lunch, get back to the room, sleep. Then evening, we're gonna check out the sunset at Gandhinagar Beach. That's the plan. Unlike the previous evening, we decided to visit Ravanagar Beach through Barefoot Resort and it was a lovely experience. It truly felt like we were in a forest in a Game of Thrones episode. This is the best access to this beach and this is probably one of the best beaches I've seen in a long time, not just in India but across the world. And on the final day, we decide to explore Kalapatar beach in the evening. Even though this is well known for sunrises, we only had time to visit on the sunset. And if you thought Radhanagar beach had bluer waters, wait till you see this. How was the trip? It was good. Rating? 8 of 10. I am still 50 free in terms of my overall experience. Like when I went to Maldives, it was clear like, yeah, I'll come back here again. But that didn't happen in the last two years. This being in India, this is the bluest waters that you can get to do some water activities. Although the resorts are over price, food quality is good, but not like there, uh, you get really decent quality food service is good. Everyone has been very helpful. You get taxis, autos, even the resort guys and the restaurant. Everyone we spoke to was very friendly and nice. If I have to change something, maybe more people visit Andamans. I think the resorts will become cheaper. But for now, they feel a little overpriced for the quality that they offer. I'm not talking about the cleanliness here, the quality. Like be it the bed sheets, the bed, be it the uh, restaurants, the food, they're nice, but they're not like like the top uh, hotels. Because for instance, our resort 
costed us what 16000 it would have been like a 8 to 10000 rupees level resort in goa or some place so maybe you can understand the difference by that but on a whole decent trip would love to do scuba diving again but maybe get certified for open dive only restriction is you need to know swimming uh, i mean you need to swim for 200 meters uh, any stroke or 300 meters with snorkeling equipment i can maybe do 50 to 75 as of now and then you need to float for 10 minutes i can't do that so these are the two things i need to learn to get that open dive master certification but all the training panic was gone when i went in and i really enjoyed the school bar. so that's one thing i can look forward to to coming to andaman second hello that's it for today's video hope you enjoyed it let me know in the comment section and in case you're watching this night have a good night and take care bye bye